Hi everyone and welcome back to The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about, where we share positive stories about issues that matter and campaigns that make a difference. I'm Tom York and this is episode 10 of Rooftop TV. Now, for our first story, this week is Refugee Week, which is a UK-wide festival celebrating the contributions, creativity and resilience of refugees. And Ian Morton, one of our writers here at The Rooftop, has a story about how a not-for-profit organisation is helping displaced young people get an education. Hi, Ian. Hi, Tom. What's the story? So, yeah, as you say, it's a, it's a new uh, education programme launched by um, an organisation called Amala, which is a not-for-profit organisation. Now, our minds have been diverted by quite a lot in the media over the last few months, as we all know. And I think it's really important that we get to highlight the issues facing, other issues facing people and communities all over the world. Now, the gap between the hows and the hows nots have really been highlighted in recent months. Take the situation faced by refugees' access to education right now. Now, UNESCO, they've recently said that school closures widen learning inequalities and hurt vulnerable children and youth disproportionately. Already, refugee children had um, you know, less access to education than the rest of the population. The kind of things that we just take for granted, right? Now, a quarter of all refugees uh, are in secondary school education. 24%, that's compared to 84% of the entire global population. So the, the difference is quite stark. Now, in Jordan, where this qualification uh, is being trialled, the numbers are even lower. So you've got 4.8% of Syrians and Palestinian school children in secondary education. So we're talking about, you know, real low access to education. Now, as you say, this is Refugee Week. I think it's really fitting that we've seen the first ever diploma of its kind for refugee school children um, by, by Amala. Now, the diploma program has been launched with uh, the support of an organisation called United World Colleges. They've got a campus based in Southeast Asia and they do some great stuff around the world. Now, the first class of the diploma program, given the restrictions we're all facing at the moment, is going to be online while these restrictions remain in place and they're hoping to move it back to in person as soon as possible. So yeah, so we're really happy to be featuring this story this week. You know, it's a fitting week, as we said, and you know, really great work by Amala and United World Colleges. That's fantastic. Thanks a lot, Ian, for that story. Now, continuing on the theme of education, we have a very special guest with us today, a young student from Tibet who has an inspiring story to tell. 17-year-old Detjen is on a scholarship program at United World Colleges Atlantic in Wales, and during the lockdown, she has been using her spare time to make masks and PPE for local hospitals, and also raising money for refugees. Hello, Detjen, and welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. So, what inspired you to start making PPE and face masks? So, um, since the announcement of the lockdown, um, I stayed here at UK with my host family since I wasn't able to go back because our borders were closed. So, um, so we had some discussions about COVID-19 with my host family and we were discussing about like how masks have been impacting certain countries and how it has helped um, to reduce transmission and overall rate of um, COVID, uh, spread of COVID-19. So um, on the other hand, we were also discussing about like how, how lucky we are and how some people like um, Syrian refugees are not having great time during this lockdown. So, so we decided to um, make some mask, which we called friendly, friendship mask and for elderly neighbors around us and all over St. Albans. And also, it's, we thought like it would be great if we could raise some money out of it and um, donate it to Syrian refugees and help them. Yeah. That's fantastic. Really great work. How does it feel knowing that your hard work and donations 
are helping to protect people and potentially save lives in such a difficult time? It feels great. Like um, nothing can feel better than uh, helping others. The feeling that you get, um, the satisfaction you get after rea realizing that um, your work has been um, helping others and saving lives particularly. So it really feels good. That's fantastic. And I love the name Friendship Masks. That's a really, really nice thing. So some of the masks that you're making are being sold to raise money for young people in Syria. Is that right? So I mainly work on like masks and PPE uh, during weekend. And I work with my host mother, who is really good at it. And I, I had, I've never done sewing before. And it's completely a new experience for me. And so uh, it is also a new skill to learn from myself as well. And yeah, um, so we had made like 500 masks now so far. And we have raised like um, about 700 pounds. So we're still continuing to make uh, those masks. We also made some PPE gowns and we recently delivered it to the uh, nearby hospital. And yeah. That's great. What are your plans for the future, Dechen? So after completing my uh, IB diploma in Atlantic College, I'm planning to study medicine because I'm really interested and passionate about caring for others and especially um, about all the medical stuff. So yeah, I'm just thinking of applying to uni somewhere in UK or in some English speaking countries. That's fantastic. Well, thank you, Dechen, for joining us. Congratulations again on all of your fantastic achievements. And we wish you all the best for your studies. Thank you. Now for our final story, Ian has news about a rugby star who has come up with a novel way of raising funds for an important charity in Cardiff. Over to you, Ian. Thanks, Tom. Well, yeah, look, I mean, the charity sector, like others, of course, are facing major challenges to keep fundraising for causes out there. And, you know, at the start of the lockdown, charity bosses said then that they were likely to lose four million pounds in revenue due to coronavirus. So, you know, this means that charities are having to come up with new and innovative and engaging ways to fundraise. And we, we recently featured a story on the rooftop um, about kidney research and their social media selfie uh, mug uh, challenge. Now this week we featured a Welsh rugby international who's come to the rescue of a hospice in Cardiff. Now Ellis Jenkins, he's the ambassador for City Hospice. That's the only specialist uh, palliative care home in the Welsh capital. Now, due to COVID-19, they've had to cancel all of their fundraising events. So we all know about the football keepy uppy challenge, right? Well, this is the rugby keepy uppy challenge. So Ellis is asking supporters to film their attempts post on social media and nominate others to do the same, as well as donating to the hospice, of course. Now, the suggested donation is £20, but you can donate whatever you feel, he says. The hashtag for the challenge is 2020 Keep Up Challenge, and you could bag yourself a rugby ball signed by the Welsh Rugby International team. Wow, there's an incentive to get involved. Great work by Ellis Jenkins for City Hospice in Cardiff. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. You can find out more about today's stories and all the other positive news this week on our website, therooftop.news, and on Facebook and Instagram at News from the Rooftop, and of course on Twitter at News from Rooftop. And as always, if you've got a story that you want to shout from the rooftop about, email it to us at editor at therooftop.news. I'm Tom York, and this is The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.